Hi, welcome back to our uh, Jansen Art Studio and the YouTube Rose Modeling Channel. We're going to do another quick little rose modeling composition for you today. Here I have a, a fun shaped little plaque board. It's available. You can get these kinds of things all over, you know, all, all over the internet, all over, probably in your town. Um, if you can't find anything like this, we have them here at our studio. This is a nice little 5-8 inch thick um, one. I just absolutely love it. I base coated it with some uh, medium white, which is what I usually do. I didn't use any sealer in it, just medium white. And then I, I lightly sanded it with 180 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to paint it all prima, which means I'm going to be putting down some uh, background color here first. So I'm going to use my brush, which I just used on another painting. So it's dirty and it doesn't make any difference. So it's got a little dirt in it. That's okay. It won't hurt anything. And I'm going to, uh, let's find some nice colors. Let's find like a, a real... Um, uh, let's go like a real umbery kind of color to make some umber kind of colors but I want to do a light light umber color to make umber is red and black will make you start your brown okay and a little bit of yellow that starts your brown color and uh, that's what we use in our painted simply so I'm using the painted simply palette here which you see everywhere this is the um, the you know, six colors again, like I always do, of the six colors of the paint is simply the phthalo blue, the cool uh, uh, red violet, naphthal red light, uh, hunter yellow, white and black. Okay, and then there's some extender into the center there. So I use this brown, and then the umbers are a brown that goes kind of green. So to get a green, we take some yellow and a little bit of black over here, and I'll get this kind of greenish color here, and I'll just add that right into the brown right here. And that will help me get these umbery kind of colors, which is what I want. And I increase the black, I'll hit more of a, a, a pure raw umber color, which is right there. Um, but I want to go more uh, light color with this, so I'm going to add some light to it. So I get kind of this light umbery kind of color here. And uh, that'll be a pretty color to put up on top of this today. So we're going to work into this here. But I want it kind of light. I don't want it too too dark dark with that so I'm going to add just a bit more light to that and run that into this board here and I'm going to uh, run it and you know the the Norwegians in the old days they did a, a a thing where they glaze over the background called the surin and stuff and so I'm just going to take my uh, towel like this and wipe through this here and and I'll wipe through in a couple of different angles like this and you can tap through, you can model through, you can do all kinds of stuff here. I'm just going to just give a little bit of movement here like this to that. That'll make a pretty little color for the rose modeling to start out with today. And a little bit of a nice warm kind of reddish umber color. And you can have it more green, you could have it more gray or whatever you want to do. It's just That's just a nice pretty color to start out with. Now we'll do uh, here, and I'm just going to freehand into this. Now, if you want, you could dry this and then continue on. Okay, you get the color because, you know, if you make a mistake on it, you can't wipe it off. You know, I'll have that umbery color right over here that I can always come back in and, and, and do something with, which I don't mind doing. I like to loosen up and do that. But you could dry this, and then uh, if you want, you can come back in and work it again. So it's up to you. Now, I'm going to take this more 20th century, loosen this up a little bit more by taking, let's go back into some of these kind of reddish brown colors here. And I'm going to add, matter of fact, I'll do this with my big brush here first. I'm going to add some ideas of some uh, flower units of movement back in through here. I love to get this and this movement into the designs. And today, this type of movement is so very popular you know, in, into painting, you know, so the, the artist and the viewers see movement like this into the paintings. And it is so very popular, and I like to add that in. And especially, I like to, when I do these type of fusion techniques and everything, and I, I key a lot off of rose modeling, but I also, you know, uh, you know, take ideas from the European flowers, uh, I like to head more towards the look of like a telemark or something, because that's the fanciful style of, of rose modeling uh, from the telemark valley. It underwent a lot of changes, and it is a more, uh, um, I want to say, it's it's not realistic type painting, but I like to, it because it is so fanciful, it, it can be it take on so many different forms, and I like to head that way. I'm going to go right into kind of my umbery greens here, 
So green is black and yellow here, and I'm going to use that to to establish uh, some some scroll lines here first. So, you know, with the telemark scroll, it's it's kind of a, a, a consistent width and stuff to it right here. But I'm going to change it around, and I'm just going to put a C scroll right down through here. Now, in telemark, you have one main scroll, larger scroll, that is the root scroll. Uh, that's the, the the traditional way of doing it, where you would have a root scroll here, and we'll build a, a scroll shape like that. I'm just going right from the, the flat of the brush right onto the chisel here like this and building this like this and like that. And so there's there's all different kinds of ways in which you can build the scrolls. And, you know, we might take a, a darker little color here, just a little bit more. I'm going to leave those this, this one and two tone like this. This was the older traditional style. But again, we're changing it. But I'm going to come with a little darker look right in here and build this right into that scroll right in here like that, right over the edge of that right there. And that's a pretty, that's got, that interrupted the flow of that one a little, so I'll stroke that again. And that's kind of a pretty look to the color of that one right there. So then I decided, you know, if you're going to do one main anchor C, you know, do you come back with another one? If you're, I'm going to come back with another one right off, uh, off of here, back these up like this, but this one will be a little bit smaller because it'll, it won't be the main root. I'm going to visualize that one as the main root. So we'll just put a little knob onto this one and let this one be a little bit smaller. Maybe even curl this bottom one back in like this a little bit here so it comes different. And I'm going to let this scroll, and I'll just maybe draw a little edge out here like this. Let's do that. I'm going to let this just kind of do what we call fracture. Um, I'm not going to let the scroll be absolutely perfect. I'm not going to work on making the scroll absolutely perfect. I'm going to let it fracture here uh, so that I get some interest here to that. So it's, it's very artistic. It's changing quite a bit. Let's just curve this around right up here and close that one off a little bit to that side. That'll be kind of pretty here. So now I'll build some flowers up in there and right up in here. Okay, so... I think what we'll we'll build some uh, rose mauling, uh flower shapes themselves. So I'm going to go here with some red violet. We'll go right into some of those greens. We'll get a nice toned red red violet color. And originally in the rose mauling, they didn't use a lot of red red colors. And today rose maulers do. Um, but my teachers originally told us no red. They didn't pinks, no pinks. And rose maulers today are doing that, which is really refreshing to see. We'll put a big uh, uh, a, uh, rose or uh, a uh, flower right up here. We'll put a smaller flower form right up in here maybe, turning that way just a bit. Um, let's come in right in here. We'll put one right in here. Come in that way a bit. I love to just kind of idea. So I'm just kind of getting an idea, following some ideas here from... This is my, uh, you know, my my uh, root here of, you know, how am I going to build my my flower, my flower forms off of off of something like this. And so we'll build one down here. And I love to just create like this. And it used to scare me. My background used to scare me. Oh, boy, what if I make a difference? And now I got so much stuff going on in the background. It doesn't bother me anymore. Used to, though. It, it used to bother me. Now let's... um. Let's head towards a nice toned kind of yellow color. I'll put it right in here with some of that brown. And if I want it to go more green, I slide up to the black. See how that gets green. But I want it to go more brown, so I'll go this way. So let's find a nice golden yellow that would look pretty with some of this. And we'll put some of this yellow into the backs of this flower. We're going to do a lot of whites here. But we'll let this golden yellow come in. So I'll have kind of a reddish side to the flowers and a, a, a golden yellow side to the flowers that I want to paint here. We'll let those just come out. We can even do the S strokes and but you know I, I usually the flowers were created and I've painted Rosemont for 35 years and normally the flowers were created on C's and S's. And I spent you know 20 years perfecting my C strokes and my S strokes and doing all that. 
But today, of course, everyone is painting more casual. So I want to give the impression of C's and S's maybe into the designs and the building of these flowers. But I don't want to um, do things that are absolutely uh, restricted to, a, so to a, a particular shape. I want to be more casual with the application of these uh, of the rose modeling this time. So it's a little bit a little bit um, more free. And that's what I want to. That's what I want to try to capture this time in the painting. So I'm going to take some white down here, and I'll add it right over here to the side. And see, it makes a nice creamy color here, and we'll use that here to start to build the main part. I'm going to wipe the brush. I'm going to redress right into that creamy color here, and we'll use that right in here to maybe start to shape some of these beautiful flowers here. So I go curved and curved. And it's somewhere in here, into, I've got to go this way where I've got to bring that together because this flower is going to round like this here. And we'll just let this fade off there to the side. So that'll build a pretty little flower right there coming, building right there. We can add step off to the side here, add a little more white to that. And we can build a second little row of, of petals or so here, right up into the front of this, right up... Uh, over this one just a bit here like that that's pretty let's go back to our nice softer cream color and we'll build a soft little petal there soft little flower there and we'll just build a soft little flower and we'll step off to the side add just a little bit of light here and add another little petal right in there here we'll. So it's, I'm really very much so when I paint the flowers like this, relaxing, relaxing the, the, the structure of the strokes here. Um, and you would think, okay, that's just going to be easier. I'm just going to back off some of that light. And I want to uh, put in another little bit of, make this flower look a little different. Hit the dark back over here again. See how that narrowed it down, made it a little darker? Let's get a little of that green into some of these reds. And so sometimes I'll set dark strokes right back up on top of the light strokes here. And that's that's kind of pretty little flower there like that. So it's a little different. It carries the same coloring and everything, but it'll be a little different here. And see, you can change these. See how I can change that? Come right back into that. We'll come right back into this light. But I'm 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 constantly experimenting as an artist. You know, I love the the rose modeling, I love it. It's my, it's my life, and but it's to paint the same thing all the time is very, very boring. And so, it's um, you know I'm changing it always. I'm changing it, and and trying to grab new painters and new ideas and new ways of doing things, new ways of looking at things. So we can put some dark in here. Just grab this beautiful little flower shape here. And just grab and use some of this dark here, like this, these reds. And let that sit up on top sometimes. Going around and you make a pretty little flower shape like that. Just, it's different. And that's the key. That's what you're trying to do. Something that's different. Let's go back in. Grab some, the softer light color here. And let's just add the front light petal here into the front. And let's just grab... A little more white and grab this light petal here into the front of that one there okay so that looks pretty good we could um, reach over grab some of that nice toned red here that red and black here and you know sometimes I would especially like in a Ronsal or something you, you could do a stroke out like this you know that the, the shadow comes out from the base like that and that's a pretty little stroke too here you know the the light doesn't always have to sit on top the dark stroke can sit on top so that's a pretty one there as well it's just a nice you know you're just trying to make a nice casual pretty little flower and so i'm going to come back here and and uh, i will start the back side this will be the main flower larger flower hanging down here so I'll start the idea of some back petals here. I'm going to do a double layer, 
you know, two layers of petals. In Telemark, they call it a complex flower. It has multiple layers to it. So we will put the back side of the flower in, the complex part of the flower. I learned these back in, these complex flowers like this back in my first ones back in 1975. Painting with a rose Moline master from Norway. And then we will come in and we'll start to put in the next layer here. So um, the, the complex means that it's going to have multiple layers to it here. So we'll put in that here. Let's just put in a little more light. Let that streak up there. And we'll streak up, leave a little bit of a space. Streak up this one a bit. And this feels ever so much like oils. And when I first started rose molly, that's what we used was oils. Now I'm going to just, I'm going to really decorate this flower up. This is going to be the main flower of the design. So I'll just edge my brush and just slide in a little bit here to, to create some nice movement there to that uh, edge of the flower there. It's nice. Maybe we might want to put a little movement to the edge of that one there. That's uh, kind of nice. We can, uh, I want to put a little more yellow reaching out here from this and then out like that. So that flower contains a little more yellow and maybe a little bit more of a white right up into the very center. So that's right down in here like this. Oh, that's a little heavy there. So I'll stroke that again. Just so that streaky picks up that, that streakiness there and let's just get a nice cream. If I pick up the white and I'll creamy it on my brush by stroking it a few times on the palette here. And then it'll go on nice and smooth into that stroke there. And then I'll have to add a little bit more here. There we go. That makes kind of a pretty little flower coming down on that side there of this one. Here. And I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of the light shape to that outside edge there of that one. A little more fanciful flower. Maybe uh, I like that little bit of light edging on it so I'm just going to just edge the brush and just pull a few strokes in like this and even out like that just to give that look to that. And you see that just came from the decoration and so I, as I'm decorating the flowers I don't always look at you know finishing the decoration on each one. I'll come back like the the idea of one will give me the idea of decorating on the other. So to do those little strokes, I just pick up that little edge like this. I slide my brush in like that, and I pick up that little edge, and I just pull that little stroke down, and it gives that little edge, and it's kind of nice. Let's do it a little soft over on this side here. That's just real kind of pretty, kind of a pretty little flower there like that. Okay. So now I'm going to come in, and, and I think I will take some of my soft uh, greens here, soft greens, and, and uh, very, you know, neutralize it with a little bit of those reds, some soft yellow greens here. And uh, I'm going to just restroke and reset up uh, some of that scroll. I'm going to just do some what we call this accent strokes out through here. I call them wispy strokes. I let it just run out here like that. A little wispy stroke to the painting here. Just as a little movement to that. We're going to leave this painting very simple. Just wispy little strokes out here like that to help fill up so we won't do you're like formalizing little leaves or anything. We'll just do this little wispy shapes to, to give you ideas and feeling of leaves. And then we'll go right over to our quill to do a little decoration to it here. So we'll just wispy up a little bit here. Wispy up some strokes there. That'll work pretty nice. So now we got a nice little shape um, of colors into that one there. Now, I'm going to uh, reach over, I'll grab my quill, and when I use the quill, like you see me do before, 
I will use water. So I have a little thing of water over here. I'll add water. So one of the few times you see me add water to any of my paintings, because I usually don't. And I'm going to use some uh, darker color, some really darker umber kind of color. So I'll make that brown and then slide some green into it. Darker umber kind of color. And I'm just going to do some uh, line work out through here just to lighten up the the feeling of the painting here and you know telemark feeling and stuff they do that a lot the little decorative uh, line work that that uh, makes the painting more airy and uh, so I'm gonna, just gonna do that and the hardest thing about all of this is is uh, I use this quill just right on the point. This is the Raphael 16684 number three quill, but the hardest thing is to keep your hand out of the wet paint. So I always tell my students, this is a point where you could sit there and, and get it dry if you want, and then come back and add some of this, this little decorative line work and decorative lines to the, to the uh, stems. We'll put in stem units to the flowers here. Just come in like this, like that. Different types of stems. Here's now stems can rotate up like this, which they do a lot. Like they'll come in and then put the lines out like that. Okay. Um, there's multiple ways you can do it. Here, I'll just add some lines here. So we'll pull out the stem line here. Out like that just lots of little decorative lines and I, I love the quill it just does it 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 works so so light and so airy it, re, it moves very nice to your hand even though it's a very soft brush it moves very nice to your hand so it's a wonderful one to use and I just decorate the line work out here like this and I step off the edge of the scrolls, just kind of follow their shapes, stepping off the edges and stuff of the scrolls so that it makes it look a little bit more airy and lightweight here. And sometimes I'll do like complete, almost secondary designs with just my quill out here like this, just ideas of little lines and designs here. Little decorative lines, and you can add uh, little little striping lines inside your flowers. Sometimes I'll add those if I do a lot of line work to the outside. I will sometimes add a little bit to the inside of a flower, and especially the big ones, the real big flowers. Yes, do a little decoration over here. But again, it's, um, you know, when I did uh, rose modeling before, more formally, you know, telemark and stuff more formal, um, I'd be very careful with uh, my line work and stuff. And now I relax it and let it just dance around the painting here. I'm, my job is to just decorate and add the lines and, and the decorative lines to it. And so that's what I'm doing is just decorating here. Pulling through and decorating, using lines just to, little decorative lines, filling up here and looking to see, you know, I, did I capture the feeling of it that I wanted? And lines are great, little lines are great, you get too many, just run it through with your little finger. You could use, um, you know, they do a lot of reverse tiers and all kinds of shapes and, and, into the more, the older styles and stuff. And so you can add those. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can, uh, you know, grow our rose mulling out in new directions and do different things and everything. And, you know, I love to do more casual styles like this because I feel that, you know, these just have a lot of appeal uh, as well, and it's different. So I can do the other older styles, but I also want to try to do stuff that's different and bring new people into the market. So let's take some of our reds, okay? And let's get heavy with the red and uh, the black and yellow over here, and we'll get those umbery kind of colors, which is what I want to head it just a little more black and green here. Get that umbery color. There it is right there. 
and let's look at that as a nice trim. I'll just add a little water to that. Let's look at that as a nice darker contrasting uh, trim here for this edge. And I think and I'll do the edge and then right up onto the edge a little bit. So I'll do the edge and I'll do the routed edge and then up onto the edge of the board ever a list a little bit like that as a heavier frame. Since the flowers here are bigger, you can frame it just a little bit heavier than, than having that route. So I will do this sometimes on boards is I will take not only the route, but then I'll go up onto the top flat part of the surface here as well with a little bit of color. Just take my edge, let my board like this, and just pull right down like that. And that will help give you a, a, a heavier frame look to it. So we'll do the edge and then that. And then slide and do the edge of the board as well. And again, I keep it all casual, so I don't go out there and measure and tape. You know, when I was a young painter, I did that a lot. You know, it's like, oh, I got to put, and my teachers will say, no, don't to be doing that. That's, it's got to be look, it's got to look like it's hand painted, hand decorated. And you study a lot of the old pieces like I do. Boy, there's some uh, very casual applications of it. <laughs> so. But I'll finish this all off. You'll see the uh, final photo of it. I'll do that. And I'm going to put a little stripe right around the inside, which you've seen that before. But that kind of finishes off a nice little uh, rose mulling design for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Look for more of our casual little styles. And then we're going to do some structured styles also of the rose mulling. Some of the older traditional styles. Because you need to learn the tradition to do the casual. Okay, So we'll, we'll look, look for some of those lessons too. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time painting with you. Try out some of this rose mine. Change some of these colors too. Try this in blues. It'd be pretty. Right? See you next time. Bye-bye.